Here are three examples of natural decay. Uh, natural decay, also called natural transmutation. The word transmutation signifies the fact that our original nuclei turn themselves into something new. For example, lead 210 turns into bismol 210, or radon 210 turns itself into polonium 206. So, transmutation means that our nuclei change into a new type of nuclei. The word natural is here to identify the fact that we have nothing to do with that. This process occurs naturally. We are not causing them in any way. Those uh, nuclei decay because they are unstable and they will decay whether we want it or not. We cannot stop this process and we do not initiate this process. It occurs naturally. Yet, as humans, we dislike when something is happening without us without our permission or without us messing up into it somehow. So we invented artificial transmutation. It is when we take a stable, normal isotope and change it in a way to make it unstable and consequently radioactive. And the first experiments regarding this were done by Ernst Rutherford, who was shooting alpha particle not only into the golden foil in his famous golden foil experiment, but also into nitrogen-14. And when the collision between those nuclei, nitrogen-14 and the alpha particle, were good enough, strong enough, then oxygen-17, an isotope of oxygen, has been created as a result of it, and also a proton would be shooting out from this collision. Well, oxygen-17 is a stable isotope of oxygen, so we haven't, still haven't produced a radioactive material. But at least in this experiment, Ernst Rutherford discovered a proton, a positively charged particle, subatomic particle, that is responsible for positive charge of the nucleus. A symbol to represent a proton would be letter P with the mass number of 1 and the atomic number of 1. But also, very frequently, the proton can be represented by the letter H for hydrogen. Since the nucleus of the most common isotope of hydrogen is just a proton, we can write symbol of proton as hydrogen with the mass number 1 and the atomic number 1. Shooting alpha particles into other nuclei became very, very popular among the scientists. So, in 1932, James Chadwick discovers a neutron by smashing alpha particle into beryllium-9. Look at this reaction over here. Alpha particle smashes into beryllium-9 and carbon-12 is formed. But also, apart from carbon-12, a new particle, a uh, subatomic particle, comes out from this reaction. It's a neutron. This particle has no charge, and it has a mass of one atomic mass unit. This particle was suspected to exist, but James Chadwick was the first one who actually figured out how to get it out of the nucleus and was able to observe it and indicate that it has no charge and calculate its mass. Okay, two years later, Iran and Frederick Jolie Curie, they shoot alpha particle into aluminum-27, and they transmutate aluminum-27 into phosphorus-30, and once again, a neutron comes out of it. But neutron has been discovered two years before, so it's old news. But what is interesting that through this experiment, the stable aluminum-27 transmutates into unstable phosphorus-30. Phosphorus-30 is an unstable isotope of phosphorus, and it will decay through the positron decay into, into silicon-30. So, as a result of this artificial transmutation, we took a stable isotope of aluminum-27 and we transmutated it into unstable isotope of phosphorus-30. That is what artificial transmutation is all about. And what is also important to understand that aluminum-27 would not undergo this transmutation into phosphorus-30 if we would not help it, if we would not be shooting alpha particles into it. So we initiated transmutation of aluminum-27 into unstable form of phosphorus by shooting alpha particles into it. This is artificial transmutation. Here are a few examples of artificial transmutation. And please notice, it's not al only alpha particles that we can use for 
uh, artificial transmutation. We can shoot into the nuclei neutrons and protons and electrons, and with that, with them, change, transmutate uh, one nuclei into different nuclei, initiate transmutation of nuclei into different things. I want to point out important detail about correctly balanced um, reactions of artificial transmutation. The sum of atomic numbers on the left in our reaction should be always equal to the sum of atomic numbers on the right. Look, look at this reaction over here. 0 plus plus 17 equals 17. So on the right we have 16 plus 1 equals 17. The, si the sum of mass numbers on the left also should be equal to the sum of mass numbers on the right. And we can see it right here, 35 plus 1, 35 plus 1. And let's check two other reactions as well. 2 plus 3 atomic numbers uh, on the left add up to number 5, and atomic numbers on the right also add up to number 5. Mass numbers on the left add up to 11. Mass numbers on the right also add up to 11. In the last reaction, Atomic numbers on the left add up to 84, and so do the numbers on the right. And mass numbers on the left add up to 210, and so do the mass numbers on the right. This is a mix of artificial in and natural transmutation reactions. All our natural transmutation reactions are over here and over here. Look at that. This thorium decays into palladium just because it is unstable. We are not doing anything. We are not shooting any kind of particles to initiate this transmutation. It undergoes beta decay because thorium-239 is unstable. And this magnesium-23 turns itself into, transmutates into sodium-23 all by itself, without any interference from us, without anything us doing to it. Magnesium-23 is unstable, so it will decay through the positron decay into, so, uh, into sodium-23. To but these two examples are examples of artificial transmutation. Over here, we bombarded lithium-7 with alpha particles. Lithium-7 is a relatively stable isotope. To get it to decay something, to form some, some new particle to transmutate into boron-10, we have to bombard it with alpha particles. So this is artificial transmutation. We have two things on the left from the arrow. And over here, we're bombarding a nucleus of chlorine-35 with the neutrons. Chlorine-35 is a stable isotope that would not be transmutating into anything if we would not, if we would leave it alone. But we don't. We bombard it with neutrons, and as a result, chlorine-35 transmutates into the sulfur-35. Let's look at some sample questions. So here's one. The particle represented by X, we need to figure out what kind of particle it is. Well, we know that the atomic numbers on the right add up to number 5, and so should add up atomic numbers on the left. So this number over here got to be 4. And the mass numbers on the right add up to 10, and so should the mass numbers on the left. It means that the top number over here is 9. We have two answers that fit the description, this one and this one. And we will choose number 2 because beryllium is element number 4. Lithium is element number 3, so this one over here is completely incorrect representation of uh, isotope notation for lithium. Lithium cannot have atomic number 4. Another question. Which nuclear equation represents a natural transmutation? So natural transmutation means that uh, our transmutation occurs spontaneously without us messing up or doing anything to it. And it's obviously this reaction over here because uranium, being unstable, transmutes into thorium and alpha particle released in the process. In all other reactions, we are clearly messing up with the aluminum and nitrogen. We are shooting alpha particles into them. We have two parts to the left side of the reaction, which usually means that we are looking at artificial transmutation. Here we need to identify which equation is an example of artificial transmutation. And the first equation seems to be 
uh, seems like an artificial transmutation. Beryllium is attacked by alpha particle and it transmutes into carbon-12 and neutron released in the process. The rest of the equations are not even nuclear equations. They are chemical equations. We do not see any transmutation. We do not see one element turning into another. All elements that we see on the left present in the appropriate amounts on the right. So there was no transmutation, natural or artificial, happening in this in the rest of the reactions. Those are chemical reactions where there is no change to the nucleus. Atoms are just rearranged. Which equation is an example of artificial transmutation? Well, we can notice that out of these four reactions, three have only one thing to the left of the arrow. So it means that those nuclei that are represented here, carbon-14, uh, radium-226, and uranium-238, they are unstable all by themselves. They undergo this transmutation all by themselves without anything initiating that transmutation. They undergo transmutation because they are unstable. But in the reaction number two, we see that aluminum-27 is attacked by alpha particle. So it means that we are artificially inducing a stable isotope of aluminum-27 to transmute into the phosphorus-30. Which equation represents a transmutation reaction? Well, if we look at the possible answers, we can cut off uh, two bottom reactions because they are not transmutation, they are not nuclear reactions, they are chemical reactions. All the atoms that we see on the left as reactants are present in on the right as products. So none of the nucleus undergo nuclear decay and change into some new atom. At the top reaction, we see nuclear reactions. But in the first one, we do not see any change in the nucleus. Uranium-239 emits gamma rays, but it does not change into anything, uh, anything new. It stays as uranium-239. So there is no transmutation. So this is not our answer. The only transmutation here is carbon-14 decaying through the beta decay into nitrogen-14. That's transmutation. And over here, we need to figure out the missing particle based on our understanding of how, of how well-balanced, correctly balanced reaction of transmutation should work. Okay, we know that the atomic numbers on the left here add up to number 9. And so should these two atomic numbers. They should add up to number 9. So we expect this one to be 1. The mass numbers on the left add up to 18. And since we expect the mass numbers on the left, on the right also, add up to 18, we expect this one to be over here. So X is apparently a proton. The proton is the only particle that has mass number 1 and atomic number 1. The same logic will help us uh, with the uh, reaction at the bottom. So the sum of atomic numbers on the left is 16, and so should be the sum of atomic numbers on the right. So we expect atomic number of X to be 15, which help us to figure out that this element is phosphorus, and the mass number of this phosphorus expected to be 32, because mass numbers on the left add up to 33, and so should mass numbers on the right. And over here we have a reaction of artificial transmutation of beryllium into lithium-6. And let's see what particle helps beryllium to transmutate. So we know that these numbers add up to 5, and so should be these numbers at the bottom. And the top numbers add up to 10, meaning that it should be 1 over here. The only particle with this kind of mass number and atomic number is a proton. Let's see if this logic works for our bottom reaction. Okay, 6 plus 98 will make 104. 12 plus 249 make 261. So the bottom 
uh, numbers here, the atomic numbers, uh, should add up to 104, and it means that atomic number of X should be 0. And 257 needs additional 4 to make it to 261. So we also have coefficient 4 here. So whatever we have of X will be multiplied by 4. So 1 at the top of the X multiplied by 4 will give us exactly 4 atomic mass units that is needed to match the mass numbers, some of the mass numbers on the left. A particle with zero charge and one atomic mass unit of mass is a neutron. So four neutrons produced in this reaction.